Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we'll be creating a watercolor fall wreath directly in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. We are using my paid set of watercolor illustration brushes for this, but if you'd like to change up the style, feel free to use any brushes that you'd like. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. I'm going to start by creating a brand new document that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi. Okay, I've got my canvas all set and ready to go. And the first thing we're going to do is drop in our background color. So tap on your layers, tap on background color. And the background color we're using is this very first color on the very bottom row. It's kind of a light tan. And next we're going to give ourselves a guide for our wreath. So I like just drawing a plain old circle and placing it wherever I would like. I'm going to use black for this, that way I can see it really well. So just double tap where the black is and you'll get true black. And I'm on layer number one and I'm just going to use my sketching pencil for this. And all I have to do is draw a circle and hold it and it'll snap into place. And then I can hit edit shape and choose circle and now I have a perfect circle to work with. If you'd like to put it directly directly in the center of your canvas. All you have to do is select it. So hit the cursor up here and this is in 5X, the new Procreate version. And then I like keeping mine at uniform that way whenever I'm scaling, I'm scaling proportionally. But under snapping, if you tap on snapping and you turn on snapping right here, if I slide it, you can see I'm getting yellow hairlines and that shows me exactly where the center of my canvas is. And now I know that this is directly right in the center of my canvas. So. I'm all set to go. I like reducing the opacity of this, that way it doesn't overpower my design as my design's being sketched out. So this is just going to be my circle. So this is just a guide to make sure everything ends up being a circular wreath. So I'm just going to label this one circle. I'm gonna create a brand new layer and this is actually going to be our sketch layer. We're going to sketch out everything and then finalize it by painting it with watercolor. So we're going to be sketching for a little bit here as we plan out what our wreath is going to look like. So I'm going to rename this one sketch. And for this one, I'm just going to sketch in black. That way I can see everything and figure everything out. And then we'll go in with color afterwards. So I still have my sketching pencil selected. I'm going to keep it at a size of about 2%, which just helps me with the smaller details, having a smaller brush. And the first thing I like doing is draw in my big leaves because this is going to be a very leafy, kind of foliage centric type of wreath. So I'm just going to draw in these really big leaves that come around and I'm using the circle as like the branch that they're all coming off of. And I'm only going to come up part way. All right, and now I can kind of connect them all if I want and just know that this is the common branch they all share. And now off of this, I'm actually putting everything on one layer right here, but if you wanna separate your elements, feel free to draw on more than one layer. So the next thing I'm going to draw in are some cattails which I'm from upstate New York originally, and in the fall we would have so many cattails around. And it kind of looks like a hot dog on a stick. Um, so it's just like this long oval, and it's got, the stem goes all the way through it, but this is going to be colored, um, so you won't see the stem going through it when we paint it in. So I'm just going to put a few of these in different areas and do different heights and different sizes. We like variety here. So we're gonna change up color and scale and shape. And that just makes everything more interesting to the viewer. So my cattails are gonna be closer to the top of my wreath. This is as far down as I'm gonna go with these cattails. Just to show that we've got elements that are only up at the top and only at the bottom and then some that continue through the whole wreath. That just makes everything more interesting. Now I'm going to move on to some berries. So I'm going to do a few berry clusters and this is what's going to bring in that pop of color to my wreath. So now I'm going to add in some different types of leaves. These ones are all similarly shaped. So I'm going to add in an oak leaf shape, which is one of my favorite shapes for leaves. So the last couple of elements, we'll add in some more of these types of leaves, but have them not attached to the branch. 
And then the last thing I want to add in is just a couple of acorns towards the bottom. So I'm going to add in an acorn right here. So it's kind of like an oval that's been split in half, a long oval like our cattails. And then we'll put a little stem on the top and then it's going to come down and there's usually a little spike at the bottom. We're going to add in some additional elements, but we're going to do that when we're painting it in, and that's what's going to finalize everything and support everything else. Just noticed I could use something right here. So I've got my sketch layer pretty much done. And for the rest of it, we're going to tie everything together by making it look like branches that come all the way around. And this is what's, is what's going to complete our wreath. So then we've got a really beautiful space right in the center to add any type of messaging you would like. My grip on my pencil is super light when I'm drawing these, and that gives it more of this rustic, branchy feel when I'm not trying as hard to make it perfect. So I just loosely hold my pencil and just bring it around. So that can be really helpful when you're drawing these, br these intertwining branches. Okay, we've got our sketch layer all good to go, and now we can start painting everything in, which is the fun part. So I can turn off my circle layer because we don't need that anymore. We've got enough of a circle from what we've drawn, and I can create a brand new layer right on top, and now I'm going to start painting in my elements, and I'm just going to switch through a bunch of different colors, and I'll be using my medium paint round brush for the majority of this, for the coloring part. So let's start with our golds right here. We'll just start with the very first kind of muted gold. So I'm just going to hop around and paint these different leaves. And you can reduce the opacity of the sketch layer if you'd like, that way you can see what you're doing a little bit better. So I'm just going to pick and choose different leaves to paint. Okay, moving on to my next golden color. On to the next color. Okay, I've gone through all of my golds right here, and now I'm going to grab a couple of my reds. I'm reserving this first red for my berries, but I'm going to paint in a few of the leaves with these other two reds right here. So I'm, I've got the middle one selected. And then I'll grab my brightest red right here. Now we're going to connect everything. We're going to draw this common branch all the way through and then we'll move on to our berries. So for that one, I'm going to use this brown at the very bottom at the end. And I'm going to return back to my round liner brush and draw that in. And then I'm going to draw in the stems of these different leaves too. Going to create a brand new layer. We'll label this one acorns. And for the little hats on these acorns, we're going to grab our darkest brown color right there. I'm going to grab my medium paint round brush, reduce the size of it a bit. I'm down to about 4%. We'll paint on the little hats. And then I'm going to grab my light brown color right here, and that'll be for the bases. And then for the little spikes, I'm just going to come back to my round liner brush and my darkest brown color, and we'll put those in. Let's move on to our berries. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, label this one berries. I'm going to grab my first red color, come back to my medium paint round, and I can, let's make this a little bigger. I'm up to 10%. I can just put in some berries. This is a pressure sensitive brush, so the harder you press, the larger your berries are going to be. So I'm just gonna drop in a variety of different size berries in these little clusters. Okay, we'll add in their stems. I'm going to grab my darkest brown color, grab my round liner brush. This is going to be a little skinnier, so I'm coming down to 2% and just drawing this on. Okay, we've got our berries drawn in. The last thing we need to paint in are our cattails. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up here, label this one cattails. And I'm going to come back to my darkest brown color. I still have my round liner brush selected. 
So I'm going to paint where the stem is, but not the cattail itself. So now I'm going to grab my medium paint round brush and a few of them I'm going to paint this darker brown color. Let me reduce the size. I'm down to 4%. So a few of these ones are going to be the really dark color just to have a little extra variety here. So move over to my lighter brown, which is this one right next to it. Now is the fun part for me. I like filling in the rest of my wreath with supporting elements that are really in the background. So if I turn off my sketch layer, let's just see what this is looking like so far. I'm going to start adding in some elements that are just in the background. They're just fun leafy shapes to support the color that's above them. So let's turn the sketch layer back on. I'm going to create a, a layer right above the sketch layer and I'll just call this one supporting. And this color is going to be the second one at the very bottom right here. And I'm going to be using my medium paint round brush. I'm reducing the size down to 3%. And what I'm going to do is just come through, there's three different shapes that I like to use. The first one is kind of a branchy shape. And I don't mind that it overlaps things back here. It is way in the background, so that's okay. This is just a really loose free hand of some branches. That looks pretty good. The next thing I'm going to add in are some leafy branches. So this one's going to come up and this one's going to have round leaves and they're going to be symmetrical. Okay, and then the last element is going to be, let me come up here. We're just going to do those pointed oval leaves, but they're going to be symmetrical again. Okay, I'm going to turn off my sketch layer just to see how full that feels if I need to add any more. And that's feeling nice and full. I really like all the different little elements poking out that are different. So I've got a lot of variety going on and some really pretty fall colors. So we're just going to finish off the branch. We're going to pop in some lettering and then we'll be all done. So I'm going to turn my sketch layer back on, create a brand new layer right above it. This one's going to be called Round Branches. And I'm going to grab my medium brown, which is the last one on the last row. And I've got my round liner brush selected. The size of this is, let's go 4%. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing that I did before when I sketched this out. I'm just going to loosely hold my pencil and then come around. Okay, let's turn off my sketch layer. I think I want to draw one more branch just to make this match the fullness that I've got already happening. So now I'm just going to pop in some lettering. So we'll come to the very top, create a brand new layer, label this one lettering. I'm going to use the same color that we used for our berries. So it's this very first red color right here. I still have my round liner brush selected, but I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So I'm coming up to 6% for this and then you can write out your quote. I'm going to turn on my guides because I have a tendency to write uphill when I freehand. So if I hit my gear icon, come to my canvas, turn on drawing guide. The one that's already there works really well, the default one. Um, let's see what that is. That is at 47 pixels. So I'm just going to use that one. I can come in here and then just write everything out. Okay, I'm going to turn off my guides just by hitting the wrench, canvas, toggle off your drawing guide. And there we go. So that's how to create a fall watercolor wreath directly in Procreate. Once again, links to everything mentioned within this tutorial are right in the video description, including the watercolor illustration brush set and the free color palette. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every-tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.